Welcome once again. In this session, we're going to be reading Paul's first letter to Timothy, chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the commandment of God our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ our hope, to Timothy, my true child in faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's never lose the perspective and the context of each letter or each book that we read. In this context, it is Paul personally writing to Timothy. This isn't Paul writing to any church. This isn't Paul writing to the world, okay? We are actually reading somebody else's mail here. Paul continues, As I urged you when I was going into Macedonia, stay at Ephesus that you might command certain men not to teach a different doctrine and to pay attention to myths and endless genealogies which cause disputes rather than God's stewardship, which is in faith. But the goal of this command is love, out of a pure heart and good conscience and sincere faith, from which things some, having missed the mark, this term missed the mark actually means to sin, having missed the mark, have turned away to vain talking, desiring to be teachers of the law, though they understand neither what they say nor about what they strongly affirm. But we know that the law is good if a person uses it lawfully, as knowing this, that law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for the sexually immoral, for homosexuals, for slave traders, for liars, for perjurers, and for any other thing contrary to the sound doctrine, according to the good news, that is the gospel, of the glory of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. I thank him who enabled me Christ Jesus our Lord, because he counted me faithful, appointing me to service, although I used to be a blasphemer, a persecutor, and insolent. However, I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. The grace of our Lord abounded exceedingly with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. The saying is faithful and worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. However, for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Christ Jesus might display all his patience for an example of those who were going to believe in him for eternal life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, to God, who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. I commit this instruction to you, my child Timothy, according to the prophecies which were given to you before, that by them you may wage the good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having thrust away, made a shipwreck concerning the faith of whom are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I delivered to Satan, that they may be taught not to blaspheme. Notice in context, Paul said that he is the chief of sinners, talking about the context of his past, not his present. Because we know in Philippians, Paul talks about his present state, his present status, if you will, and that is blameless and righteous according to the law. It's also quite notable how Paul dealt with Hymenaeus and Alexander. You know, he said, I delivered these men to Satan so that they may be taught not to blaspheme. Think about that for a minute. Can you imagine a pastor of a church today getting up in the pulpit and saying, well, so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, we're going to have a service to dedicate them to Satan. We're going to deliver them to Satan so that they can learn their lesson. Now, that's something you won't hear in modern-day corrupt Christian churches. Until next time, seek him with all your heart. And if you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.